Hi, we are Laura Amelia Guzman and Israel Cárdenas and we are presenting Holy Beast in Berninale Panorama. Dans mon pays, on dit que quand on vit vraiment, on ne vieillit pas. Mais moi, je sens que j'ai trop vécu. Et se llama la puerta. Toc, toc. Et la madame dit Qui est Et la voix dit C'est Jean. Pero no habías muerto. ¿Quién me dijo que habías muerto? Mimi, la contorsionista que se fue al Líbano. Nunca confíes en un contorsionista. <risa> Te ves igual y han pasado 20 años. En mi país se dice que la gente que vive plenamente nunca envejece. Hello and welcome to the 33rd Teddy Award. I'm here with the two directors, Lara Amelia Guzman and Israel Cardenas, and actor Udo Kier. Hi guys and welcome to the Berlinale. And to Berlin for you guys. Hi. Um, so, Udo, given that you're going to have to leave us very soon, I'll start with you. Um, the film's title is Holy Beast, and that's what your character is called at the end of the film. Can you explain the sort of holy beast uh, as a symbol in the film? Well, the, the name has been changed lately uh, for this, and I like to be called the beast. <laughs> I don't tell you the situation why she calls me the beast. Uh, but I like that, it's a great title. And Holly and Beast, my God. <laughs> you got it, you got it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, the film is, it was very interesting. First, I've never been in Santo Domingo. And secondly, to work with Geraldine again. I did it before with Guy Madden. And actually now I did another film with her. She's a wonderful, wonderful actress and not pretentious or anything like that, like we know in America. And I'm looking forward to see her later. She's coming to tonight, I guess. Okay. And we'll be seeing each other all tomorrow. Yeah, for your premiere. Uh, and obviously the, there's kind of this film taking place within the film. Yeah. So it becomes very self-reflexive about the film making process. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you guys can refer to sort of the directing and producing aspect of that, but do you want to talk a little bit about uh, being sort of an actor in, in and the in way a that... a film about a film? Yeah, essentially. <laughs> well, it was like, uh, they have great studios there from Pinewood, the famous studio in England, and they have a studio. And what I was fascinated by, they have a kind of a water pool where they can shoot underwater and ships, pirate films and all that. And the story is very simple. The story is she wants to make her last movie and she calls me and said, I need your help and I'm a beast. So I go there and make with her, help her to make the film. Yeah, and I'm the beast. Okay, and do you guys want to talk about maybe the parallel and version I, of that? I go. <laughs> Bye. I'll see you later. Thank see you for you. stopping Thank by you. briefly. Yeah, do you guys want to talk a little bit about uh, maybe the, the parallel version of that, that making a film about a director who is making a film? That must be quite a strange process. Well, the film uh, starts uh, paying homage uh, to a film director, Dominican film director, who passed away. And we wanted to portray the one a generation who was trying to do films in the 80s, 70s, 80s in Dominican Republic. And it was a very different context uh, from the context right now. Now uh, the Dominican Republic has uh, 
uh, film industry growing. So uh, the, the, the story starts there, so we, for us it was natural to, to do a film about filmmaking. Uh, and as Udo says, uh, the story the storyline is very easy, very simple. But uh, what happened in, in, during the shooting, and what what is fiction, what is uh, reality of fiction, uh, is uh, part of the of the, uh, the game. Of the game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and your previous film, or one of your previous films, focused uh, quite explicitly on like a same-sex relationship. And this film is much less explicit about that, but there are certain queer elements of the film. I wondered, why did you want to move in that direction of something that was a bit more subtly queer? Uh, maybe because it's very personal. I'm uh, portraying uh, my uncles, my parents, who were making films in that, in that uh, time. And that's how I saw them as a little girl. I couldn't uh, distinguish boys or from girls, girls from boys, and uh, I thought that I didn't want to point uh, different genres, but uh, just let people be what they are. Yeah. And the film is uh, archival to quite a significant extent. Yeah. So it takes lots of sections of Jean Louis mm -hmm. actual films. But then it becomes more complex than that. Those aspects of those films start to sort of blend into the actual narrative of the film. I wondered why you guys wanted to go for that approach rather than sort of just sticking to archival images. Well, we didn't want to do a documentary or... I mean, we, we wanted to play with uh, archives and photograph and uh, ideas and, and actually part of the film are based on uh, on works that uh, were unfinished by Jean-Louis and other friends. So we create a framework uh, mm -hmm. for the film and uh, every logic uh, on the script and what we were doing with the actors during the shooting was uh, within the framework. And uh, that framework was built uh, on, based on the work of Jean-Louis and, and, well, and friends of, of him. And a lot of the film, a big focus of the film is, is the theme of memory and the way people remember things, how reliable that memory is. Can you explain what was important about that theme and why that was something you guys wanted to explore? Yes, we think, uh, well, we, I live in the Dominican Republic and the film was shot in the Dominican Republic, which is in the Caribbean. And uh, in the Caribbean, things don't last. Memory doesn't exist, like uh, photographs disappear and the films, old films disappear because of humidity and saltpeter. Mm. So it's very hard to keep memory of things. For instance, finding those films of Jean-Louis was extremely hard. We, we found them uh, out of the island. We, they were found in the United States and France. Otherwise, we wouldn't have any copy of those films. So, in the same way, he portrayed memory in his films. Remember those Hollywood scenes, you know, like, mm. uh, we wanted to homage him in, in the same way. Yeah. I guess, sorry, I just sort of stepping back a bit, but could you explain the importance maybe of Jean-Louis Georges to Dominican filmmaking? Yes, well, he was one of the first uh, Dominican directors. He was, uh, he had the... Uh, he was uh, studying his study in, in UCLA in the 70s. That was uh, very uh, particular rare. And rare in that epoch in, in Santo Domingo. And then he made a film in Los Angeles and in, 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 in Paris that, again, was very rare. Uh, rare. Uh, and then he came to <coughs> Santo Domingo and he was the inspiration of, yeah, the inspiration for many other people who wanted to do things, uh, not only cinema, uh, music, theater, uh, television. So he was a big inspiration, a big figure in the Dominican context. Uh, uh, sadly, he died. Uh, well, he was ass assassinated. Uh, uh, in 2000. Very, I mean, it was uh, it was hard for this generation, and somehow the dreams of uh, having a a uh, director who can make uh, uh, who can make films like 
real films uh, died a little bit. So the comeback now with uh, this industry growing, uh, I think it's, uh, it's somehow it's because he was there uh, at, at the beginning. So that's why we we consider this figure is important for for the not only the Dominican cinema, but I think uh, also the Latin America cinema. Yeah. And the film drifts at points into this sort of almost supernatural. It's got these fun, uh, uh, vampiric elements mm -hmm. to it. I wondered, was that a comment on the mystical nature of John Le George in any way? Well, he was always playing with uh, fiction of fiction and mm -hmm. inside of the films, the backstage, mm -hmm. uh, the drama be behind the, the stage, and also with magic. And he, he said, or I read that uh, in an interview, he, he, he missed the, the magical cinema, the fantastic cinema. So we, we tried to, to respect that and to explore in that way. Before this film, we had made uh, films uh, more in the social drama side, so it was an important step to, for us to, to, to explore uh, this new world. <laughs> mm -hmm. he, yes, he was complaining. Films had become so realistic that they were losing their magic. So we, we thought we could make a magical film for him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that certainly is that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, and another thing that comes up quite a lot in the film is there's this generational gap. So mm -hmm. Vera, I wasn't sure, is, is it there a suggestion that she's gay? Yeah. yeah. Yes, she's inspired in a character of uh, Ed Beach Belmore, which was uh, in the 70s Paris, Queen of Punk, mm -hmm. and who was gay. So we openly thought we could inspire our character on, in, on her. Uh, Ed Beach passed away when I was writing the script in, in 2015. So yeah, Vera is an inspiration from her and other characters, uh, friends of Jean-Louis. Yeah, and then it seems like Vera is sort of looking on at some of the younger characters who are maybe more liberal, they're certainly more liberal with the bodies, with certain characters that look androgynous. Mm -hmm. and. I wondered if you were sort of trying to demonstrate the generational gap and the, the way that attitudes towards physicality and sexuality have changed. Yeah, I think she's sort of looking down at them, like these people don't party like we used to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like they think that they think they're hardcore, but they're not. <laughs> okay, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, that was the idea. Okay. And I wanted to talk about how did you find all of your actors because you've got this really interesting, real mixture of, of characters. Geraldine Chapman, who's done your films before, yeah. uh, is in the film again. So, so how did you go about casting? Yeah, that was very interesting. That's how we made the, we built the film because, like, eight years ago, we did an interview with Luis Ospina, uh, a, a Colombian filmmaker who makes mostly uh, documentaries with um, memory, with uh, footage, old footage. And um, he was a friend of Jean-Louis. And he told me, I think I'm dying very soon. You have to do an interview. I'm going to tell you a lot about your uncle. So I recorded him. And I saw these recordings many times. And I thought he would be great as an actor. Mm. And I wanted this real voice, authentic, telling stories about Jean-Louis being in the film. So I convinced him only a month before starting to shoot to be in the film. And um, I thought of a story of four friends of Jean-Louis, like uh, Luis from his ep uh, times in uh, UCLA, uh, Edwige, which is Vera, from his times in Paris, and somebody from the Dominican Republic that would welcome them and help them make this big production. And that was uh, Jaime Pina, which was a producer back in the 70s, 80s, and uh, he, was, he was dreaming together with Jean-Louis of making great films. Okay. And Udo, yeah. <laughs> especially, was uh, the, the, the special piece there. We needed something magical, I was telling you. And uh, we thought of uh, Jean-Louis always 
this is something very Dominican. People speak a little bit in Spanish, a little bit in English, especially people that have lived abroad. Mm. So we wanted Vera to have this bilingual thing. So we wanted somebody that spoke in English. So we thought, English-speaking actor this times, and I know Jean-Louis uh, admired uh, Udo's work. So we oh, really? we reached out to him. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. that's really lovely then. Mm -hmm. There's all mm -hmm. this connection between everyone. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say, you, you guys are a couple and you, you've done all of your films together. How do you find coming up with all these ideas together and then directing everything together? Well, there are plenty of work always, so two persons is not uh, enough <laughs> sometimes. But I think we, we work, uh, uh, well, we work, we like what we do, we explore and we we do it naturally. I mean, we, we have been doing films uh, together since the, the first one. So I don't know how is the doing by myself only or... <laughs> no, but how did I convince you to, do, to get into this film, for example? No, we, I don't know. Uh, you didn't you, convince me. No. I mean, we were talking about the ideas and suddenly we said, OK, let's try to do this kind of film. This time she was more in the investigation, the research, research yes. and for me was more the technical part, the editing maybe, the photography. But uh, yeah, I think the, 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 the good thing is that we, we enjoy talking about the films, we do. It's a lot of work making films, you know, so when you're at home you, you never stop working, you're always talking about the film. And now we have, our kids are very against this film. They're like, <laughs> we want to destroy it. <laughs> why, why are they against this film? Because uh, it, they think it's very bloody. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not for kids. How old and, are kids? Yeah, and they're, and they're jealous. They're how, jealous. How old are they? They're 10 and 7. Okay, that maybe, maybe <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> yes. Not quite their target audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you talked about bringing the kind of magic back into Dominican film. Yeah. Do you guys have any future future projects? And would you stick with the same kind of style? We don't know. We we like we like to, to do this uh, step in, into the fantastic journey. Uh, but uh, I think the next one is going to be different from this one. But I, I, I believe that something from this one is going to remain in the next one. It's all, always happened something like, like yeah, that. Yeah, our previous projects always prepares us for the next one. So I don't know what's going to happen. For now, what we've been writing is very realistic. But what's going to happen tomorrow, I don't know. Okay. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you. And Thank it's you. your premiere tomorrow? Yes. Okay. Please good luck for that. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.